Please do not forget me here in Ukraine. I'm a minister of the gospel who is serving in Ukraine. I've given up my life to be here to minister to the suffering. To those who are suffering, they are the suffering of the earth right now because they have an invader who has invaded their country and has driven out many of them from the east, from their homes, destroying their workplaces, their homes, their families, their friends, their cities. And they're suffering and they need the gospel. And the other ones who are here who live in, in western Ukraine need to hear the gospel because it's a threat on them in their life as well, this war. And they're ready to hear the gospel. But I need your support because I cannot work while I'm here. I'm on a volunteer visa. That means I depend on your support as Paul depended on the support of other churches while he was ministering to a certain place. I depend on your support. Please don't let me down. Step up, look in your heart and determine how much you want to give and go to the links down in the description below and give. And I will pray and I will bless you before God. Now on with the lesson. So today we're going to talk about a word that is in the Greek and is often concealed in the English translation of the Bible. And it appears in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, that's where we'll start out. And then we're going to also look at Ephesians 5.20 where it appears again. It appears a number of places. And you'll recognize the word instantly as a rather Catholic word. Eucharist. And we don't use that in the Protestant church so much, but in some of the Protestant churches they do. And you think, well, Eucharist is the elements of communion, right? Well, that is what we use it for. But it means something very special, and it comes from a very special word. When you root the word, it comes from the word for grace with the prefix meaning truly and beautifully. So that's very interesting, especially since it's the word used for the elements of communion, the grace from God, or as we translate in the rooted word, the cheerful graciousness. Graciousness is not equivalent to grace. It's actually a different meaning than grace in English, because in English, grace has the implication of mercy, Whereas cheerful graciousness may have mercy come out of it as a natural element, but graciousness itself does not contain the idea of mercy. It contains the idea of composure and politeness and kindness more than mercy. So you can see that mercy can flow from kindness, of course, right? But it's not equivalent. So let's have a look at this verse. I've done a translation for you into English. And it goes like this, In all things you must be truly and beautifully cheerful in graciousness, for that is the determination of God in Christ Jesus into you all. Now we put you all, not to sound Southern, but so that you can capture this concept that it's plural. It's not to an individual you, it's to a collective you. So this is the determination of God in Christ Jesus into, that this be worked into you, so it becomes part of you. It's not just something superficial on the outside. That's why it says into you all. You could also translate that amongst you all, but then that sounds like something superficial to the whole crowd, and that's not what's meant by this because it's the determination of God. And the cheerful graciousness that's talked about here is truly and beautifully. Therefore, it has to be internal, working itself outwardly. So we see that this word, eucharizo, or Eucharist, when we use words here in our videos, we use it as a group of words. So we may refer to the noun when it's the verb, or the verb when it's the noun, meaning that it's, I'm referring to the whole group of words, regardless of the grammatical uh, form of it. 
So that's 1 Thessalonians 5.18. In all things, in all things, you must be truly and beautifully cheerful in graciousness, for that is the determination of God in Christ Jesus into you all. That graciousness also has this idea of gratitude or thanks. And you'll see it translated thanks or thanksgiving or giving of thanks. It's not far off, but it doesn't, it doesn't capture enough of the meaning of the word. And so truly and beautifully cheerful in graciousness, you could put in, in the graciousness of gratitude. It's a little long, right? Or in the graciousness of thanks. I don't think thanks is a good way to go because it then goes off into another English word that's not as directly related to grace and graciousness. Now let's look at Ephesians 5, 20 and 21. It's a fresh translation for the rooted word, precise English edition from the Greek. It starts in the middle of an idea or statement. Of course, Paul is often writing very long sentences that are just one participle after another, connecting clauses. So this is where we pick up in the middle of his thought. And it's plural masculine, meaning it's referring to all of you. One's being truly and beautifully cheerful in graciousness every moment above all things in name from the Lord of us, Jesus Christ, to God and Father, being arranged in an orderly manner under toward each other in fear of Christ. Now that under implies God because it just mentioned God and Father. Okay? And to God and Father, being arranged in an orderly manner to God and Father. So I think they broke this verse in the wrong place. So I think that it ends with Lord of Jesus, Lord of us Jesus Christ. And I think that that to God and Father is with the next verse. So let me read it that way so that you hear the idea that Paul wrote. One's being truly and beautifully cheerful in graciousness every moment above all things in name from the Lord of us, Jesus Christ, from our Lord, Jesus Christ, being arranged in an orderly manner under to God toward each other in fear of Christ. So it's contrasting the two by breaking the two up with what you're supposed to do. So, to God and Father, being arranged in an orderly manner under Him, toward each other in fear of Christ. And I know that yours says fear of God, but in the Greek, it's actually fear of Christ. It's literally Christ. It's not God. It's in fear of Christ. And you say, that blows my mind. Because as Christians, we're not supposed to fear Christ. Well, that's not exactly true, because in Peter, we find the statement that you are to fear. And it's not Christ exactly, but it does talk about fearing God. It says here, and if we call on the Father, who without respect of persons judges according to every man's work, past the time of your sojourning here in fear. Now here it doesn't say fear of who exactly, but by context, it could be assumed that it's fear of the Father. But it doesn't exactly say. But you are to pass your sojourning here in this life in fear. If you call on the Father who without respect of persons judges according to every man's work. God does not show favoritism based on anything about the person, even if they believe in Jesus. Every man will be judged according to his work. And because of that knowledge that you have of God, you must pass your time here in this life in fear. And let that fear be the thing that causes you to arrange yourself in an orderly manner under God. 
as we saw in the previous passage of Ephesians. One's being truly and beautifully cheerful in graciousness every moment. Now remember, we talked about repentance, metanoia, being exercising the mind in the midst of. The word itself doesn't contain the object of in the midst of what. It's implied every moment or every occasion, as we talk about. You exercise your mind in the midst of every occasion. That's repentance. It's not just a one-time thing and then you forget about it. It's an every moment thing. It's the lifestyle of the Christian who has arranged himself humbly under God and remains that way every moment. He behaves this way. He thinks this way. He feels this way. He plans this way. Every moment under God, humbly arranging himself under God. So when it says one's being truly and beautifully cheerful in graciousness every moment, we need to have that character in us where we are truly, authentically cheerful in graciousness. Cheerful in graciousness does contain that gratitude concept within it. Above all things, in name, from the Lord of us, from our Lord, Jesus Christ. Above all things. Every moment, above all things. Everything that you are thinking and doing, in every way that you're behaving, this must be supreme. This must be your number one priority in every moment. Above all things. It says, in name from our Lord Jesus Christ. It's not talking about the name of Jesus Christ. It's talking about the commandment from the Ten Commandments, the one that is mistranslated from the Hebrew, even, where it says, you shall not take the Lord, the name of the Lord your God in vain. And people think that means you can't say, God damn it. It has nothing to do with that. Because first off, God is a category, not a name. Secondly, in the Hebrew, it says, you will not wear around or carry about on you like an identifying factor the name of God. You shall not identify yourself to others as belonging to God, being from God, and yet have a desolate heart. It says, you shall not carry about the name of the Lord your God in desolation. That's what it says. You shall not identify with God, His name, and be desolate in your heart, where nothing can grow. That's what that means, that word. It's a soil, it's a place that is so destroyed and barren that nothing can grow there. Hardness of heart, like Paul talks about in Romans 2. Those who are going to be destroyed and sent to hell and then cast into the lake of burning sulfur because of their hardness of heart, their impenitent heart, you'll read in some of your translations. So that's what we're talking about in name from our Lord Jesus Christ. That it's the name that we are carrying about. And yes, it's Jesus Christ. It's as a Christian, we call ourselves Christians to identify ourselves with Christ through His name. But it's not about His name, it's about us identifying through that name. So now let's read it again. One's being truly and beautifully cheerful in graciousness every moment, above all things, in name from our Lord Jesus Christ. To God and Father being arranged in an orderly manner under Him toward each other in fear of Christ. It's a beautiful word study. It's very rich. It's very deep. There's a lot to learn from it. And I just want to go back and reread this translation before we close it off. So it says in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, In all things, again, all things, in all things you must be truly and beautifully cheerful in graciousness, includes gratitude in that. It's implicit. For that is the determination of God in Christ Jesus into 
Every one of you, all of you, you all. It's a lot to think about. Go back and watch the video again and then contemplate on these things. Spend 10 minutes, 15 minutes just sitting contemplating on these things from these two verses. May the Lord bless you as you seek him with all your heart.